Hey everyone, it's Arthur again from LEGO Education and um, let's continue with our explanation about the, the Humanoid project. Last video we were talking about uh, prototyping with the LEGO bricks, a little bit of sketching and trying to organize, trying different ideas, how to test movement and uh, we were using this prototype of ARM and uh, today we are going to move uh, to the big robot but before that um, let's uh, I just want to explain some of my findings when uh, I made this uh, prototype like this um, remember that I, I was talking about the size of the scale of the robot so as you can see the robot arm looks pretty good on size I was able almost to use just motors, so I don't know if I could make it smaller. But uh, as you can see, um, four motors um, and everything is quite light, it's working. So one of my findings was, um, okay, the scale is pretty good. So the robot, if it, I'm doing just the torso, it will be like this size. And um, after that, I said, okay, maybe we should just add the legs. But uh, when um, we have a project like this, you can go in so many different ways and uh, um, adding legs to the robot. What the robot will do, it will walk. Well, probably you know how hard it is to make robots walk. Uh, walk. Just with two legs, it's really complicated. And, um, and when we are thinking about Lego bricks and the motors that we have here, probably we don't have the, the right power to do the whole thing. Um, and um, uh, of course you can use all the tricks and uh, maybe the robot will be quite slow moving maybe we, you can do that but uh, in my case my goal was to create a robot um, a humanoid that could mimic my movements that could mimic human movement so it could be quite natural smooth so in in that sense uh i, I didn't want to use the legs just as uh, we could think so I built another small model to explain a little bit my goals with this. So I have um, just a small Ipid robot here. So it's just a, a mocap, right? And normally I do this kind of prototypes a lot. So it's something that I will play with my hands and uh, we, we can check how it will move. As you can see here, I'm not moving the legs. And uh, imagine if I need to add motors for each joint, I will use several motors. But uh, we can use a trick here. If my robot will not walk around, will be in a stand, I could have like the body, the torso and everything in, in one place. And I could move this and the legs would follow. It would make things much easier. Uh, it's almost like a puppet. So in a puppet, what happens that you, who is controlling the puppets is um, controlling the end of the arm and the arm will follow it. Um, in the same case we can do here. So instead of having all the motors around, we can have just a structure moving the body up and down. And uh, my plan was to have like rotating also. Um, the only thing that I'm adding here, and, I th and uh, you are going to see it creates a really cool movement, is I add two motors, one for each feet. And uh, so you can do things like this. So I'm moving just the feet and uh, all the joints will follow it. There is no motors, there's nothing here, just a structure and it follows. So that's the, the basic uh, uh, concept for, for the body and uh, for the legs. Let's move to the big one. So, ta -da! let's see it here. So, here it's Alice. That's her name. And uh, I call her, um, and uh, I believe it's her, but uh, yeah, from the beginning, I know she she's uh, quite strong, but uh, I call always her, yeah. And um, as you can see, I have the same arm that you saw before, so and uh, so the same thing so that's the kind of movements that we can do with the la uh, with the arms so like if we want to have alice uh, waving we could easily do this 
Hi, Alice. Yeah, good. Um, here are the legs and here I have like uh, a big lift that lift the whole robot. And we are going to talk more about this because here I need to have like a motor with enough torque to lift the whole thing. And that I made almost like a, 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 the same kind of prototype that we did with the, the arm, but uh, just the, the lift here. And um, to, to test that, I placed several hubs on top uh, of that just to create weight and to see if it could lift. Um, here I have the, uh, the legs. And so I have like a motor down here that um, moves the, the feet. So going... You can see here that I have a, um, a spike essential hub here and I have ultrasonic, but um, I'm not using them as a function today. I'm planning for the future. Like if I want to create interactions with the robot and you want to be in front of it, I could use the two, the two ultrasonic sensors to detect if someone is in front of it. Uh, but right now, it's just um, um, I'm just using the lights as I uh, effect. Um, but uh, it's a dummy leg, so there is no motors here. Um, but the robot has several uh, different joints here. So um, let's go from bottom to up. So I have the two uh, feet here, so two foot here. I have the lift that goes up like this goes down like this i have like um the uh, the full body i can move like this and the, as you can see like the uh the legs are moving so doing this and this okay i also have the torso doing this and this um, in the beginning, I just had an idea of um, having just the, the full body moving, but uh, um, I realized that I had a little bit of space here and I thought, okay, maybe it could be nice to divide. And um, when we start to move to animation, we are going to explain a little bit more about this, but it creates a, f a, f a completely different situation because moving in different steps, uh, like dividing the body and having the neck, it creates a, such a natural movement. It, it makes uh, a lot of sense. So we have like one section moving the whole body here, another section moving just the torso. The head is, um, um, it has a quite complicated mechanism. I will show um, when we move to the virtual twin, but it has two motors that works together to create different positions. So I can just turn the head like this and uh, Again, it's quite interesting. Um, we, we need to create like uh, some characteristic for this character for Alice. And uh, like a dog that when turns the head like this. So we can do this kind of stuff to create like um, uh, some, uh, we can simulate some uh, expressions. Like if it's the robot has a question or in, in doubt of something, it can turn like this. If it's paying attention to something. So it's nice to have that movement. And, uh, and with the two motors, uh, we can also move it to going up and down. So I don't know if I will be able to do so like going up like this. I have an, uh, another motor that will rotate the neck, so the head. And the last one is the one that I, uh, I think was the, my last addition to this robot. That was the ears. So, so it is another quite interesting element. And uh, um, and again, when we want to create expressions and you want people to interact with your robot, you need to create emotions. So, uh, and it's like small details like this, uh, uh, ears that moving up and down, it creates a, a quite interesting uh, element to animate. Um, and uh, when we are looking for references on this, it's interesting to see animals because like uh, or maybe cartoon or things like that, because they use several tricks to to because the robot will not talk. It doesn't have eyes, so it doesn't have the, the face expression. So how can we use the body communication to really communicate something? Well, 
here's the robot. Um, I will get the same thing that we did last time. So I would get one of the hubs and um, we can see how it's moving. I think it has the program zero. And um, I did the last, uh, last time I did the same thing like with the arm. So I, I made um, like a program that I have like one handle that I would try to move the motor. And it's quite important because I'm not using my hands to see if it will work or not. So I will grab the motor. Let's see which one it is. It's this one. So yeah, so here you can see I'm using the motor and I am able to lift the, ro the whole robot. I'm happy with the speed. I'm not expecting to be so fast on this because I'm using a lot of the power to have a lot of torque, but you can see I'm able to move up and down. Okay, uh, just to show, let me put back here, otherwise it will not move. So um, let's show the, the leg, uh, uh, the foot. So again, so, so as you can see here, it's moving. <laughs> Just the movement like this is nice because it looks like it's pressing something, it's um, mashing something, right? So, yeah, cool. I will put it back. Um, let me show another movement. Um, let's see I, if I will remember which one is. So, this one is one of the um, turning tables. Whoops, I need to stop. Before turning. So, so here you have another movement. Great. So, when I was happy with the full robot, I start to move to the next phase. Because like, I don't want to code it using just a small, um, just um, um, Python or like simple commands of motors. Go to this position, go to that position. If we want to create movement that are quite smooth, we need to combine several, several motors in the, same, um, in the same target. And that's what we are going to do in the next video. So based on this, we are going to create a virtual twin. So a virtual model of this. And we are going to use a studio. Um, and studio is um, a software that was designed by the community from uh, uh, Bricklink. And it's free. You can use to document your projects, to share, to buy also elements. And uh, we are going to use it to create the 3D model that we are going to use in the animation software later. So, but that's where we are. So. See you.